Okay, so this is a recording of how to place an order on the Open Food Network for somebody who doesn't have internet access. So you may be a volunteer who's offered to take orders for people who are self-isolating or people who, uh, for whatever reason, uh, don't have internet access but need to place an order on the Open Food Network. Um, what we're looking at now is the home screen for um, the national Open Food Network. Um, if you want to find a particular shop, uh, you can go to the shops tab here and that will show you all of the shops that are open in that area and you can then search for the shop that you're interested in um, or you can use the map and, and, and zoom in on the on the area that you're interested in and find a shop. Uh, I'm on the call here with Harry who has uh, offered to be a, a, a phone volunteer and I'd like to just introduce you and, and ask Harry to say a few words about what he's offering to do. Um, yes, so, oh, sorry. Um, so um, I work for the town council, and um, obviously, with everything that's going on, we've been rotated and have reduced hours, so I've had a couple of spare days. So um, I went into the Tamar Food Hub and offered any help if they wanted it, and they said Mondays are really busy, and they said if they they said um, they wanted someone to take calls and put in online orders for people that couldn't get online and who are vulnerable. Great, thank you. Thanks for volunteering, Harry, and I'm hoping this recording will be helpful for other people as well. So um, it may be that you need to search for the shop that you're, you're taking orders for, but it's most likely that the, the shop that you're uh, volunteering to help with will give you the link directly to their shop. So this link that I'm highlighting here is probably will be the link that will take you direct to that shop front. You won't have to search for it nationally. Um, you'll probably have the link already. If you do already use the Open Food Network, it's really important that in order to take orders for somebody else that you log out from your email address. Um, so do make sure that on the on the home screen you're seeing this login button and then when you go to the to the shop that you're ordering for that you are not logged into the to, to your own account otherwise it will take the order for your account. So you should when you get to the shop front you will see this screen and you will be asked to log in here but I'm, I'm encouraging you not not to log in. Um, if you've come to the shop, uh, you may be on the notices page. Make sure you move to the shop page here. If that shop is taking orders for multiple uh, days of the week, it might be taking orders for Monday, Wednesday and Friday, it may be that the first thing you see is to choose when you want to order. So you'll need to check with your shopper which day they want the delivery to happen and then select from the, the drop down menu there. And once they've selected the day that they're willing that they want the order for then you will see the products that are available for delivery on that day um, like any e-commerce system you can filter so you might want to see only the bread products uh, if you want to see uh, just the bread products that are produced locally then you might click that button there if you want to see uh, organic products that are produced locally then you, you can have multiple multiple filters uh, you can also do to have multiple types of product if you want to clear the filters simply click the red the red words there or you can search in the in the search box here if you're looking for a particular product you can just type start to type it there and it will bring up any products that have got that character string in them um, you can also search by the by the name of the producer. So if you know that you're looking for a particular producer, you can you can type the, the name of the producer in there, and it will give you anything with. Uh, oh, that's a bad example uh, because they've all got demo in them. <laughs> so demonstration. So that that will give you just those producers. So I'm going to clear those filters. Um, if the if the shopper you're talking to wants a bit more detail about the apples, click on the the, the name of the of the product, and it will give you some detail about where where those apples are produced how they're produced um, and a bit more um, detail about the product if you want to give the shopper a bit more information about who produces that product click on the red words beneath the product description and that will take you to a, a screen that will give you more information about the producer um, where they're based um, and, and contact details for that producer uh, under each 
type of product you will see the different varieties that are available or the different weights that 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 product is available in um, you'll see the prices of that product and you can then just start to take orders so they, maybe they want uh, two bundles of apples and some eggs you will notice the basket icon in the top right will start to fill and when you've completed the um, the basket you simply click there click check check out now and when you get to this screen it's important that you don't log in uh, even if you do have a login on the open food network you do check out as a guest and you, in these boxes you will take the the name of the shopper and their phone number in this box it's really important that you don't put your email address it's really important that in this box you make up a dummy email address and a dummy a dummy email address needs an at symbol and it needs a dot com or a dot co dot uk to be a okay. to look like an email address um, but that does need to be an e a dummy email address um, uh, then obviously you'll need to take the address details uh, please yeah. do take a, a very accurate address particularly the postcode if we're doing home deliveries yeah. it's vital that we get an accurate postcode there um, and, the, and the, the, the county will need to be populated yeah um, the shipping options are going to be um, they'll, they'll be set by the administrator of, of the of the shop um, and you'll just need to, to check with the shopper which option at this time it's most likely the only option that the that most hubs are offering is home delivery yeah so just click there um, in this box you can take details from the shopper about where they would like the produce to be delivered it may be they want it left on the doorstep they may have a shed or a garage they want it left in um, take as much detail there as you like that will go through to the the shop front manager and the delivery person and then finally uh, we need to specify um, how that shop is going to pay uh, it may be that the shop front has the shop front manager has set it up so they can pay cash on 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 delivery but it's most likely that it'll be payment by credit card if it is payment by credit card then we you need to take the, the name on the card the card number the security code which is the three digits on the back of the card the last three digits on the back of the card uh, and then the expiry date which is on the front of the card and when you place the order um, you will get an order confirmation and it will be good to take a screenshot of that order confirmation uh, with that order number um, and then just email that screenshot through to the um, to, through to the hub that you're that you're working with so that, okay. they, can, that they can see the details the, the name and the address of the person mm -hmm. well, one thing I didn't mention it's really important to record ideally get a phone number if the person if the shop is willing to give a phone number it's really helpful for the delivery people to, to have yeah. a phone number um, but this this uh, is the unique uh, order number for that and that will be helpful if if you are able to take a screenshot and send that to the shop front manager okay that will be really helpful so that's it uh, is are there any any questions Harry anything that wasn't clear no it seems to be very straightforward um, it's just like ordering yourself really isn't it yeah absolutely it's, yeah it's yeah it's just a case of putting that that dummy email address in yeah, um, yeah. okay yeah remember that one thing that um, I didn't mention is um, that some shops are not some of the open food network shops don't allow guest checkout so if if the shop that's asking you to do this voluntary work um, uh, hasn't done that um, what will happen when you get when you start when you go to the um, to the shop front uh, let me show you what will happen um, so I'm just going to go and place another order if you were to come to a shop front that hadn't enabled guest checkout you would go through exactly the same process you would make an order you go to the basket and at this point when you were about to check out you wouldn't see this option it would require you to log in it wouldn't allow guest checkout and so if you do if you don't see this screen and you don't get the option to make guest checkout you need to go back to your to the person who's managing that enterprise what they will need to do 
and you'll, you can pass on this part of the video to them, uh, they will need to go to their dashboard. They will need to scroll down to shop preferences on their dashboard and they will need to go to allow guest checkout because if they've set it to require login you will not be able to place uh, an online order without without a login so do make sure that the shop front and again as, as a volunteer you're unlikely to have access to this admin screen yeah. you, you will ask, you will ask, ask them to do that yeah okay uh, so unless there's any other questions harry i think i'm going to stop the recording at this point um, yeah thank you very much for your for your help and your time fine. great